So I think the main thing to focus on here is the fact that we're focusing on the justice system. And in the justice system, there's two main things that we really need to take into account. First of all, actual justness, so um, fairness with regards to um, sentencing people to prison, sent to prison and so on and so forth. And second of all, truth, the, 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 um, the search for truth. Um, and I think um, in, we need to really keep this in mind when we're considering the motion here because it has the ability to skew both justness and the search for truth. So prosecutors should never off, offer reduced sentences. Uh, first of all, just quick definition what prosecutors are. So they're lawyers that generally work for the government and they prosecute against um, the criminals. So first of all, let's just define what a sentence is and the whole point of a sentence. So basically, a sentence is meant to be based on the crime that's done and it's meant to be proportionate to that crime in question. The whole point of a sentence is that it's meant to act as a disincentive to the community at large so that people don't commit that crime. Then when a person does commit that crime, by, cr by taking that criminal and putting them in prison, it's meant to protect the community. And then finally, the whole point of giving a sentence is that it's meant to be a proportional punishment. It's part of our justice system. It's the way human nature works. We feel that if someone's done a bad action, then they should suffer proportionately. Now, why do we think that by um, offering reduced sentences in, in, in exchange for testifying would undermine that system. Well, as we said, the sentence is based on the crime. It should therefore not be altered in any way by any other action that isn't related to the crime. So someone testifying after they've done that crime has no effect whatsoever on the crime they've actually done. And therefore it would undermine the whole justice system if we reduce their sentences um, in exchange for them testifying. Now, why is that? So as I said, the purpose of the sentence is to act as a disincentive. Now, if the public at large sees that criminals are being given reduced sentences, not because their crimes were worse, or were, were better than originally thought, but simply because the criminal decided to testify against his buddies, that means it's going to be a less disincentive towards crime, which means actually we could have more, um, the whole justice system would be less effective in reducing crime in, in the first place, which would mean that we could have more criminals, which would be absolutely awful. Opposition might um, infer that by um, forcing people to testify, we may catch criminals, which is true in the short term, but in the long term, the whole undermining of the justice system would mean that we actually result in having more criminals in our society and not less. Second of all, the point of protecting communities, if we reduce sentences, then that means that these harmful people may not spend enough time in jail that's, that's initially needed. I mean, just the whole point of a pub, of a sentence is that, it, first of all, the length is meant to act as a punishment in a way, but it's also meant, it's calculated meticulously, okay, it does depend on the judge's judgment as well, but generally it's calculated in a way that it means that the person, there's enough time for the prison wardens and psychologists to watch over these prisoners, these criminals, and make sure that they're making adequate process to the point where they're able to be um, readmitted into society. Now, if these sentences are reduced arbitrarily based on, the test, based on that person testifying, that will mean that psychologists and prison wardens have less time to examine these people. And let's bear in mind, these sentences were calculated um, to like a general recommended length for each crime um, purposefully. And therefore by reducing it with, um, it could mean that co communities are at risk because criminals will be let out and there's a greater chance that when they're let out, they're actually not ready to be let out into the communities. So we could have these criminals doing the same crimes again, or even worse crimes, um, you know, murder comes to mind. Um, and then also the fact of the whole justice system having a proportional punishment and the whole, the justness of the justice system. So the fact that um, we are going to reduce someone's sentence based on their personal assets is inherently uh, just fundamentally not, um, I suppose, um, in, in step with the whole process of the justice system. So 
I think everyone would agree, the opposition would agree that if someone had a lot of money, that does not mean that they should have a smaller prison sentence. Well, information is also an asset, a personal asset that is unfairly distributed. So say, for example, you have a leader of a group who's uh, accused of a crime and all his buddies as well. And because he's the leader, he has more access to information. Therefore, he's more likely to be able to testify, okay? And that means that he's more likely to, re to receive a, a, a smaller sentence or a reduced sentence because he's able to testify in this world. And that, we argue, is inherently unjust as well as it would be in the case of money. Information, money, they're all assets and a person's sentence shouldn't be reduced based on their assets. It should be calculated based on the crime and it should be proportional. Okay, so that's the whole fact how it would undermine the justice system. Um, another way it could undermine the justice system and um, in a, a more sort of personalized way rather than from a societal perspective is that the person generally a testifier, it, it, their only incentive ideally is to tell the truth. Okay, we do have biased actors, but generally they're meant to put their hand on the Bible and speak the truth. Now, if we force, um, if we make an, basically with this uh, motion, we're giving the people incentives to testify um, based on the fact that their sentence will be reduced. These people have um, an ulterior incentive, an incentive to testify against people, not because they want to tell the truth, but because they want to lower their prison sentence, which means that people are more likely to tell a falsehood. Um, so a general, someone testifying might testify for the person or they might testify against. Here in this motion, we only have testifying against someone. So they have to come up with negative information. Now, these people may not have any negative information, but if you face the prospect of having your sentence reduced, a lot of criminals, especially considering the fact that they generally aren't very truthful people, would be willing to tell a falsehood and get their, um, someone incriminated based on false information. Now, why is this bad? Innocent people could end up in jail. And that's why we are very proud to pose this motion that they should never, ever, ever offer reduced sentences in exchange for testifying. Thank you very much. Thank you for your speech. To the next speech, I'd like to call upon the leader of the opposition. You have seven minutes as well. Here, here. Thank you. Should I turn on the video or it's not necessary? If you wish to. Okay. So, uh, first of all, let's start from a bit of a rebuttal on open government. So, first of all, they say uh, the point that leaders are more likely to obtain more information and therefore uh, get more benefit from the reducement, right? But first of all, we must consider the psychology of these people. First of all, we understand that they're already a big authorities. Probably they have spent a lot of time in the criminal world to reach this point of their lives. And already they are very likely to be against the police and not uh, cooperate uh, with them on the principal level because the police is the main protagonist for these people. And secondly, they have probably a lot of connections in the criminal world and probably a lot of people know them, a lot of people have depths to them or uh, the other way around. So probably they're very like in investigated by uh, their like comrades uh, when they go out and uh, it's not really in their incentive to uh, be like that. But even if uh, they do that, we'll explain why it's not uh, that big problem. Secondly, uh, if these people tell a falsehood, right? We understand that probably if you're a criminal and um, you are likely to be like uh, sentenced to many, many years, you're probably likely to tell lies in the first place because you don't want people to suspect you, just like it happened in like uh, William McMillan case when the uh, white guy tried to uh, blame falsely the, another black man in order to uh, show that he wasn't uh, actually guilty. But we understand that uh, Okay, first of all, this information, this false information is likely to be found out. And uh, even if the police trust you in the first place, but then they investigate after many testimonies that uh, you were telling the false information, you're prob probably your reducement is not going to work anymore. Secondly, and uh, secondly, anyways, uh, you could, once you are caught, you could tell as many lies as uh, you want to and never get, uh, because you don't care about the outcome. You don't care whether your uh, sentence will be prolonged or reduced. Therefore, you can lie whatever amount you want to. So it's not a problem. Actually, in, in our world, people have more incentives to actually tell the truth because the reducement is very real. And like five years instead of 10 years is very real. And I want to go out. I want to go to uh, my family. I want to go to start my life over and so on, not lose my human capital and so on. And uh, 
we'll, we'll uh, tell about the principle, first of all, of the rehabilitation and re-education, why is it more important nowadays? And secondly, like how it could actually help in a utilitarian frame. So we understand that uh, open government today proposes us that we should uh, play, uh, like judge sentence based on a crime solely, and this, and this incentivizes others. First of all, we understand that uh, if the purpose was just to disincentivize others, we could merely do public punishment. We could like show it on TV and uh, broadcast it everywhere and do propaganda and show like uh, how, how is the prison life is actually bad. But to understand that we do not do so because it like uh, it, uh, it destroys the human dignity and we do, do, we do not do it anymore. Today punishment is more so Today, it is no longer meant to actually punish your body, to make you suffer, and so on. Actually, today, punishment is done more in order to re-educate yourself, to make you more prepared for the new life. And today, we are more believing in a human potential, and so on. So what do we do now is we consider a lot, a lot of factors that, in, in contrast to opening government, that are not based on the crime solely. Today, we have a lot of specialists that work on every sentence. Today, we have a lot of like psych psychiatrists, a lot of psychologists that actually uh, judge your sanity, uh, judge your mental factors, judge your background. We have a lot of sociologists who judge your like, background of your community and so on. We consider a lot of uh, things, other factors. Also, we attract juries to make a more balanced decision. And also, we uh, judge not only the crime, but also the, your perspective, your potential to actually educate yourself, how it is done. For example, if you come to to the police and you confess sorry not now uh you confess and you say that uh yeah i've done a crime i want to like uh yeah put me in prison please do it and uh, also if uh, during your sentence you are like actually showing good behavior you're cooperating uh, uh you're cooperating and so on we actually also value that because we consider that your soul i don't know your mentality is more open to change and we consider these factors as well so we consider the moral parts of your personality but not only the crime because the outcome of crime might be different but your mentality and so on might vary and we also uh, appreciate that and uh, so let's compare uh, two two worlds where the person is actually offered a reducement and when he is not we understand that uh, in the most cases like uh, only small uh, only small like um, small figures in a group are caught, uh, like just the pawns uh, in this whole world, and uh, who actually do not obtain a lot of like uh, crime on their, uh, on their shoulders and so on, and uh, because they don't have a lot of protection uh, like leaders do and so on, and they're more likely to be caught, and uh, leaders not always care about them as well. And uh, in the world where he goes to prison, and he actually is not offered any reducement, and he goes like through 10 years or five years, uh, doesn't matter. Uh, but he feels that the, the punishment that he has been given is not that just, and he hates the police, and he's more likely to, you know, uh, he doesn't feel that's uh, just because he actually hasn't done so much planning, and his motivation wasn't so much to do the crime actually, but rather to survive, to get some money and so on. But uh, he feels the crime is not proportionate to his mentality, to his mind with him and so on and therefore he feels more unjust and he goes and aligns with a lot of other criminals he uh, goes uh, a lot into cooperation with the local criminals who are already in prison and he actually stagnates in this criminal mentality and thinks that the world is very unjust and this feeling of adjustment is very likely to not make him rehabilitate actually in the future and uh, but in our world, actually, what we do with his mentality, we give him a chance and we give him a trust that um, he is like kind of chosen. And we believe that he probably is more innocent than the others. We say, okay, we give you the chance and we don't think that you are like the, your other guys. We think that you probably have other factors and so on. And uh, we give you a chance to tell the truth now. And, so, and probably if you give this data, uh, of course, you will be... Uh, taken to many um, investigations, P uh, police, the police will ask you a lot of information and so on. And actually, by this, you show that you are not like others and you actually disconnect yourself from the others and you show that you're not, um, uh, you don't, don't have a lot of interest in uh, making this uh, crime organization's uh, activity happen further. And therefore, you show that you are more like cooperative and uh, this also, uh, like, affects your mentality while you're in prison. When you are actually sitting in prison, you're more likely to cooperate now because you've been given this chance 
and you're not that much, you're thinking, okay, this is very temporary. I was given just two or three years. Soon I'm going to leave. I should not really connect with the locals. Uh, I, I was given a chance. And now, um, like, we believe that this really affects the mentality of the person who was uh, sentenced. And therefore, uh, on the principle of rehabilitation, uh, please vote for the open position. Thank you for the speech. I'd like to call upon um, Deputy Prime Minister. You have seven minutes here. here. Yes, just give me one second. I'll open my timer. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, can you hear me? Okay. Yes. So, first of all, uh, I would like to start by rebuttaling a very simple, uh, like, small point. Um, so she was saying something about um, how important it is like now prison is not like before, not like 10 years ago. It's about rehabilitating their psychiatrist. There is a lot of system going in with it, which means, and it once again proves the point of uh, the opening government, what we already said that this sentence is important. It's not like when they don't testify, we will tell the psychiatrist, go home, please. No need, don't concentrate with them. The psychiatrists, as a psychiatrist are still there. And the, uh, actually the sentence could be decreased even after they are already in the uh, prison according to their behavior. What we are against is the fact that we are saying that we are going to decrease their sentence only according to their information, which makes it unfair for other people who don't have this information. So that it, they will not get the same decrease. Even if like when you say, oh, so when they give information, that means they're willing to become better people or willing to uh, just try and help. Once again, as we said, they could be a leader with so many, so many information, decrease their sentences and just go back to doing whatever they did before because they have a lot of information and they could give many people away very easily, which is unfair because if it's a smaller criminal, he will not have the same amount of information. He will not be able to decrease his sentence as well. It's just a fully unjust uh, uh, system. Another very important thing is that, as you said once again, it's not about punishing them or just like, yes, we need to, to punish them. It's just that we need them to become once again functioning human beings that are able to merge in our society without any problems. And anything that uh, plays with it is unfair, especially for if you think about the victim's family. It's also unfair for him to have killed their son, for example, or did anything of that kind. And uh, the victim, well, they, they, they are just, uh, their sentence is just decreased just because uh, just because they said an, an extra line or they said um, uh, and testified against someone. Once again here, let's make it clear that we are not saying just testify and say the truth. We are saying testify against someone. Testifying against someone is once again unfair for this person they are testifying against just to decrease their own uh, sentence. And one thing that they didn't like, uh, I don't know, uh, the uh, opposition didn't really explain to me, how are you going to make sure that what he's saying is the truth? How do you make sure that this is not unfair for the person he's testifying against? So uh, yeah, one another thing is she said something about, oh, he will feel it's unjust and he will hate, uh, like he will not believe in the system anymore. He will feel it's unjust if we promised him that if he testified, we will decrease your sentence. But if we didn't promise him, what we are saying in the government, that it will be a rule that whether you testify or not, it's not gonna do anything to your sentence. So we didn't promise him. From where did he expect that? Why is he going to feel that it's unjust? This is really important thing to uh, bear in mind. Um, and one another thing that we like, I think is really important. It's the trust of the people in the uh, judging system. We need to feel trust, trust, uh, like we need to be able to trust that if some person did this crime, they will take him, not only punish him, but more importantly, rehabilitate them 
and and like give the give us another chance to be able to communicate with this person ag again if we think that it's unjust they just want to have it easier like they want to catch more people easily and uh, make their job as police policemen like easier and then we uh, instead of actually trying to help this prisoner to rehabilitate him punish him for what he has done for the people or the victims people will simply with time lose trust in uh, this uh, organization or in the full system so yeah that was it for me uh, any pois okay perfect thank you Thank you for this speech. To the next speech, I'd like to call upon the opposition. You have seven minutes. You're here. Okay. So let me. The whole thing the open government is talking about is actually not true and our principles of rehabilitation are more important. First of all, um, proportionality is a bad principle because it's subjective. Victims, for example, always want higher sentence and they always, always value their sufferings over the sufferings of the criminal because he's guilty. And it's, um, if it was proportionate, it, it, uh, according to the um, op opinion of the, of the victim, it will be really like, big and it, it does make sense. So proportionate is not objective because every judge has their own like, uh, has their own opinion on, on one crime over another and this is not actually objective thing uh, to think about. Um, actually, there is like, um, uh, there is like, it always, it is important to have this information because if you are a member uh, of a cartel or organized crime, it is very important to have a, like very small bits of, of information because it's very hard to track cartels because they're international and your jurisdiction uh, limited to one country, not allowing you to actually persecute the people. Moreover, there's a lot of like, there's like huge network of the organized crime where you also, it's very hard to track uh, maybe heads of the cartel down. So it's, it's, uh, it's important to have a lot of information about it. So over half of people get back um, uh, to the crime after they get out of the prison because the, uh, the current system in the US or for example in Russia is not about rehabilitation, it's about punishment. It's about, uh, the, uh, the pr uh, prison is about punishment and because you are like uh, forming like new like bad connections in, in the prison, you're going back uh, to the society worse than you were before you go get to the prison. So it's like bad system what the, and, and, and actually like the period of time that you are in prison, uh, like don't do anything to you because, <clears throat> because the longer you are in the prison, you are becoming more marginalized and uh, antisocial and that's why it is bad. Um, uh, it's easy, uh, like as asymmetry in power. Yeah, we agree that there's asymmetry in power of the, of the, in, in, the, in hands of the different uh, pr uh, criminals but some people um, also are more privileged in the justice system because some people have opportunity later to bail out for example for them but others don't but we still have this instrument in the justice system moreover um, we as the persecution we uh, actually should know uh, some information about the criminal and we actually like should know what what kind of information he may um, possibly have so in this case we can check info we can uh, do our own investigation. There are tons of instruments to check this info and not actually believe his first word. That's why there's a lot of instruments to actually um, check that. Also, there is um, no information, uh, like no information, even like cool information can solve 20 year sentence for murder. We believe that this information, like they can um, lower your sentence for five years or something like that. They can give you like better, uh, maybe better prison and stuff like that. Uh, they can give you some, uh, maybe some protection from the cartel that, w that will actually, uh, like if, he, if the cartel finds out that you give some information, it, it will trace you. So in this case, we see that pre uh, like, People will still get their punishment, but this will be lower because it is good. So it is always unfair for the victims because they always want more, uh, more, uh, more time in the prison for for their offenders. For example, like. Mm, 
sex offenders, the always like uh, victims are never happy with the sentence because they want them to be killed or something like that. They they are uh, like they are think they are thinking uh, and uh, and pretty legit that they they are. Uh, their suffering are way uh, like um, more meaningful and important than the sufferings of the criminal. So uh, why it is fair to do that and principle of rehabilitation works on our side of the house. People get to leave because uh, uh, before their sentence is done, uh, for, uh, for example, for good behavior in the prison or for example, for community service in the prison or if they show that they are ready to go back to society, people actually uh, and persecution allows people to go out before the sentence end, and it's good because uh, in this case there are way more opportunity for people to actually rehabilitate and go back to the society. Okay, opening up. How does someone's ability to do community service um, relate to someone's ability to testify? Those are two different things. In our world, we also have that. Okay, well, uh, why is it actually works as a rehabilitation? Because uh, by like telling something, uh, some, uh, some selling some something against your like uh, former peers, it is good for you because. Um, because you you are telling something good for the uh, for the investigation, and this information will actually help uh, in in future. For example, for persecuting other people who sell drugs or who uh, kill people or like uh, who are uh, or or who kill people. So in this case, we believe that they are um, uh, they they are giving some benefit, some uh, utilitarian like goods for for the persecution, and that's why they deserve to lower uh, the lower amount of punishment. Even if it's like doesn't work the utilitarian principle, we believe that um, when you are uh, uh, testifying against someone, you are uh, breaking ties with this uh, organization. When you are like giving out your boss or your like. Uh, made in this case, you are uh, there is no going back. You will be in the program for um, in the program for protection against uh, cartels because and you are never going back because you persecuted against the cartel. And in this case, we see there is huge rehabilitation. There is hundred percent, um, like hundred percent, uh, like uh, chance that he he will not go to the same cartel because he never wanted he never wanted there. So uh, why is it so important? Because Testifying against someone is very important because without that, we lower our chances to persecute cartels and persecute organized crime. And this is uh, really bad. Why? Uh, so information helps to persecute others and on gov government wants to proportionate proportionate punishments uh, on our side of the house we find more crime and more criminals on their side of the house the opportunity is limited more crimes go goes unpunished and um, prolongated, so cr creating more suffer and injustice. World of, go of government is unjust because they don't have uh, ability to actually persecute people. It's more important than asymmetry in the criminals, uh, asymmetry and asset thing that government is talking about because uh, actually those criminals are, are uh, actually guilty and they're um, uh, and actually guilty and we should like uh, care about them less than actual people that are not guilty and suffering because of the cartels, suffering because of the organized crime, they get killed every day. And that's why these people that we want to protect as a justice system are much more important than go operating government talking about asymmetry in the criminal uh, information. Very happy to oppose things. Thank you for your speech. To the next speech, I would like to call upon government member. You have seven minutes. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. OK. Just give me a second. I'll find my timer and I'll organize my notes so I can actually see them. Great. All right. Uh, so coming out of, oh, we get generally speaking only two points, right? It's that, oh, this is so good for rehabilitation. And secondly, we're going to catch so much organized crime and it's going to be great, right? Let's just start with some framing about why it is that snitching doesn't really work and what, why specifically it is that's an incredibly inefficient method to achieve both of those goals. Firstly, let's uh, first note, who is it that's actually going to snitch? It's people in organized crime, meaning that it's people who have, first of all, spent a vast majority of their life within organized crime or has you know, um, been deeply entrenched within organized crimes. Secondly, there's no reason to snitch if your sentence is really short because then you don't have the same payoff opportunity by snitching, meaning that the people who are going to actually do these things already have really long sentences, meaning that firstly, the crimes that they've committed are generally speaking pretty bad. Secondly, also that they are probably really 
entrenched into organized crime, meaning that they have deep rooted ties within that. Let's see on the people that they want to catch then. The heads that you actually want to catch, the more powerful they get, the more valuable it would be to actually catch them. The harder it is to actually get people to snitch on them because you know they have moles within uh, you know different protection agencies that have extensive networks and corruption just in general. It's very hard to convince someone to actually snitch on them because their safety will be compromised. This is also why a lot of people don't choose to go into witness protection programs because they don't work all the time. Okay. So what is that we get from that then? It is that the people who snitch are firstly hardened criminals. That means that the framing that they want to push on that, oh, they just, just so happen to be unlucky and fall into these things isn't really true because you have to accrue a lot of criminal activities in order to actually get a sentence that's worthy to reduce. And secondly, you have to be really close to mafia bosses or people who are actually valuable to catch, right? Meaning that the people that you're going to uh, give shortened sentences is really bad or have done extensively bad things, right? Okay. Uh, secondly, it also means that very few people will be willing to snitch in the first place, and the people who do will have specific incentives as for why it is, because the cost of actually doing it is pretty high. What are the people who are uh, likely to do that then? It's uh, it's probably people who, who um, or is it that, you know, when they snitch, it is fundamentally bad for rehabilitation and for catching the criminals. On rehabilitation, we think that, you know, when you talk about rehabilitation, because O's case was basically just a good reason for why it is that we should have generally shorter sentences. Why is it we have, uh, like snitching specifically is a bad way of reducing your sentence. We think that firstly, it's a misalignment of incentives. This means that the reason why you want to snitch is not because you want to be a better person, but because you just don't want to go to prison, right? It's not that you feel that you want to contribute to society or help in, in any way. We think that that's fundamentally wrong with the idea of rehabilitation in terms of like, we want to have uh, shorter sentences for, pe for people who want to participate within society. Secondly, we think that the certainty of the deal, like the, the fact that when you get the, uh, these sorts of deals it's that okay if you just snitch on them then you will by a hundred percent assuredly get a shorter sentence that means that you don't really have the introspection and reflection needed to actually achieve the goal of rehabilitation this means that this is what is needed to validate the points of og and uh, what they you know hinge on that this is why rehabilitation is not a point that can fall on uh, opposition side in any way, if, uh, way shape or form okay what, what is really important with the criminal justice system is not you know, how efficient it is and how many people get, uh, get caught all the time necessarily, because there are plenty of different systems that don't really um, you know, maximize that in every instance possible. What is really important is that the population, the general population feels that the system is fair and there's no critical flaw in the system. The feeling of justice is more important than the efficiency, uh, efficiency of it. It's what OG was trying to get to, but I'll explain to you why it is specifically a bad thing. Negotiation with uh, criminals is in Inherently seen as a bad thing, generally speaking, right? Most people don't feel like the police, the CIA, FBI, or whatever should be cutting deals with criminals and allowing them to go free, and you know, um, and saying, "Oh, if you just do this for me, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll give you a shorter sentence." Because firstly, it aligns the uh, police closer to criminal ties. It makes you believe that this system is inherently flawed because people can just get away with crime as they see fit, right? Why is it that it's different from rehabilitation? Rehabilitation uh, necessitates proof of change in behavior, right? When you uh, when you want to take these sorts of deals, it doesn't uh, you know it doesn't show any signs of rehabilitation or willingness to change the ways that you're actually working. What is it that happens when you have a lapse of faith in the criminal justice system? What you get is more societal disorder. Just on a, a general level, it means that you have less trust in the police. This means that you're less likely to call on them when you need help or in other ways need to rely on uh, you know the uh, criminal justice system. This means that when you feel like you've been wrong you're less likely to seek out the help that you need. Secondly, also needs that you're less willing to help out the government when you witness a crime because you don't believe that they're able to, you know, rightfully give this, uh, the sentence that you need. This means either that you're more likely to be a vigilante in extreme cases, but also just in general, that means that you're less likely to want to testify in a fa face of the court when you think that it doesn't really matter. And it also makes you less willing to pay ca uh, taxes for these uh, systems, uh, systems because you don't really believe in government in general, right? Okay. POI before I move on. Okay, uh, trust in the police is more complex and if like police would explain that it's something for bigger bigger target, for example, boss of the cartel, we can rid of the cartels and organize crime, people will be happy with that because they're safe. Okay, so the idea of taking down multinational cartels by having witness tes uh, testifying within a singular country is very unlikely to happen because first of all there is a reason why they don't prosecute known criminal families because they don't have any you know structured evidence and 
witnesses aren't going to change that because just because you say that someone did something doesn't mean that you have any evidence for it. You have to have the substantial evidence for these things, right? The thing, uh, the thing is that uh, the negotiation with criminals specifically, especially in public instances in which uh, most of the longer cases will, uh, longer serving sentences will be, the more efficient it is, it is more harmful. So to speak, it means that the more uh, impactful the uh, the negotiation and the uh, the deal would be the more public uh, publicized it will be and the har uh, the more harm it would bring to the public image of how it is that the police work that's like uh, quote unquote directly correlated right okay why is it that we think that is also different from rehabilitation from on the criminal's perspective we think that with if you have a criminal who is going to uh, cut a deal right they're going to go uh, they have two choices right they can either go back to the real world in which they don't feel like they're, they're going to get killed immediately or they go into witness protection why is that we think that's fundamentally bad on both accounts on the real world right we think that first of all they're deeply entrenched within criminal activities right this means that they're very likely to back fall back into the same organized crime swings right meaning that uh, because they have to societal pressure of that or also that they don't have a network to actually change things and they haven't had the proper amount of time to change that if you just if oh just wants to have a shorter sentence in general then all for it but we think that rehabilitation uh, or like the uh, cutting of deals with snitching is specifically bad on witness protection we think that it's unfair to uh, to give them a fresh start without showing any needs of rehabilitation thank you thank you for your speech to the next speech i'd like to call upon uh, member of the opposition, you have seven minutes here. Here, uh, several seconds. I will uh, make my timer work. Okay. So I'm ready. Uh, so I start my speech. Uh, first of all, I will try to explain why fairness, uh, why uh, effectiveness of uh, judgment system is much more important than its rightness. First of all, uh, society wants a safety. Uh, crimes is a very, very rare event. Most, most of us uh, would not uh, be a victims of crimes. We are not, most of us are not a victims of the crimes. So average person, person don't want to avenge criminals. Uh, he wants to be sure that uh, crime would not, will not happen to him tomorrow. That's why uh, as a whole society wants effectiveness instead of avenging these criminals. And uh, first of all, I want to uh, explain why it's fair to reduce uh, the sentence uh, to, uh, after these mechanisms. It is fair because when uh, some criminal testimony against his colleagues, he uh, goes on a very, very huge risk because criminals kill, it's, it's normal to criminals to kill for such actions. So uh, if some criminals, criminal want to testimony against his colleagues, uh, he already uh, very, have a very, very strong risk of losing his life in the prisons. So, uh, but uh, when he testimony against his colleagues, he gives a very, very large profit. And I will explain what kind of profit to society. So it's very, very fair to uh, somehow uh, give him uh, some profit uh, to him to, to reduce his sentence. So that's why it's fair to uh, use this mechanism. And uh, I have two main arguments. Uh, first of them, it's uh, the testimony is against uh, Colleagues uh, against his criminal colleagues is very uh, unique and very important. First of all, a lot of crimes are happened without any kind of witnesses. Nobody saw this crime. Another uh, point of status quo: uh, if the uh, crime was uh, made in group, is there is very low probability that we can uh, catch every person uh, from this group because it's very low probability that every person uh, in this group will leave some clue uh, on the place of the crime. So uh, the, some part of the uh, group will uh, uh, leave, uh, the court will leave this, uh, his punishment. And uh, the, 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 um, and uh, testimonies gives us a unique, uh, it gives to prosecutor a unique uh, instrument to have a full picture of a crime. Uh, for example, uh, testimonies is not enough to send a person to a jail. Uh, and in our, but uh, testimonies will ha uh, help a prosecutor to uh, create this whole picture of a crime and use some clues uh, uh, that unmapped to, uh, to some persons to find these persons and to send them to jail. For example, if uh, we found some DNA uh, on the uh, place of a crime, 
we don't know whose, uh, whose DNA it was. And we have to, uh, to test a whole city to find a person who was uh, in this place. But if we have uh, some testimonies from other criminals who we already catch, uh, uh, we can know which person in the city we ha have to test. And that's, that's why, uh, that's how we can uh, send to the uh, prison a right person. And that's how we can uh, find this person. So uh, these mechanisms uh, really reduce the probability that uh, some person from the group uh, will uh, leave uh, his sentence, with, will leave his punishment. Uh, another uh, consequence of this is that uh, criminal, it's much harder to criminals to form groups uh, because when they form groups, they always uh, be sure that someone can testimony against others if they will be catched. Uh, so uh, there are smaller number of groups in our uh, groups of criminals. Uh, why it's important to reduce number of groups? Because uh, there, is, uh, there is a much lesser number of group crimes, and, you, and we all know that group, uh, group crimes are most harmful and uh, most dangerous for society. It's like uh, group robberies, group uh, violence, group rapes, and we really want to reduce uh, Number of groups and this mechanism gives us opportunity. This is opportunity because uh, criminals in our world, in groups, uh, do not believe each other from the beginning, and they spend much more time to create to create a group for the uh, uh, crime. And it's uh, that's why it's much more safe to live in the world when uh, it is hard to, for criminals to form such groups. Another my arguments is uh, destruction of criminal links and connections. Uh, first, uh, tables already talk about uh, cortals, and I want to speak about some specific, uh, specific properties of these cortals. First of all, as I said, uh, the most dangerous crimes are uh, made by cortals. Cortals are very, very dangerous because they are professionals, they have a huge experience. They have a lot of resources, money, and links in corrupted, uh, with corrupted officials. Uh, cartel. Uh, work in a very huge risks. That's, uh, that's why they need to trust each other. And uh, it's uh, really safer for criminal to go in the, to the crime in the large groups because they protect it, because uh, cartels protect their members using, uh, for example, uh, this money and uh, links in the government. Uh, so, uh, and uh, another point that uh, some uh, members of uh, uh, these cartels don't make uh, crimes by their own hands. They just uh, use orders, and it's really hard to prove that they make these orders. Uh, so uh, the consequences uh, the, 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 uh, making testimonies against uh, your colleagues is a very important instrument to make uh, participants in a group uh, very, very uh, harmful to a criminal. Because uh, every uh, criminal don't want to go to the prisons. That's uh, why uh, some of them uh, will want to reduce his sentence in a prison uh, using uh, uh, this information to give to the prosecutor. Uh, and uh, it's a really unique instrument to catch a leader of a group. Why it's important to catch a leader of a group? Because a leader of a group has whole res uh, full resources of a group. If we just uh, send to a prison just uh, low rank uh, criminals, a leader will create a new group and make a new criminal. So uh, that's why it's important to reduce number of percent before my, your time. Thank you for the speech. To the next speech, I'd like to call upon the government whip. You have seven minutes. Hey, hey. Hi, can everyone hear me? Yes. Perfect. Let me just grab a timer and I'll be ready then. All right. I'll start off with a few points of uh, direct constructive uh, rebuttal and then kind of highlight an overlying issue I think we saw in the entire opposition case. So the first I think I want to highlight is how it was a bit interesting that in the middle of this, uh, the speak by the uh, closing opposition leader was the kind of downplaying the value in, of information right after saying what profit, what huge profit we're gaining from the criminal. We think there's kind of a bit of a clash in, time, in terms of like when they want this information to kind of be deemed as valuable. And then when they're also trying to kind of downplay the role and 
just to say, look, these criminals are going to be like not really uh, kind of risking that much. But then they're saying there is huge risk. You think there is a bit of a clash there. But let's go into the kind of the nuanced aspects here. So on the first part of why is it actually fair? So I, I don't think on, on the entire, on, at least in the closing government, we're inherently against rewarding criminals necessarily for um, actually giving out information. But it's, it's the aspect that we're saying is that it's the unique aspect of reducing their sentences by giving out this information. We think that's the inherent issue here. We think the only metric that should be used for when we should release criminals earlier than what their sentence is given, whether it, irrespective of the entire conversation that was had in the opening half about this kind of are the sentences just and actually relative to it. We think that overall on a large scale, probably the sentences that are given out are relatively more fair than they are more unjust. We think that, but regardless of that, we think that the only metric that we should use for when we're releasing criminals earlier is the metric of what is their process in the rehabilitation stage? Are they actually showing signs of improvement? Are they actually going to be able to put back into society in a better position? We think that there, those systems are already in place and we don't think that we need to add more complications to it by allowing these kind of individuals to be giving out more information and getting out early. So we're not inherently against this whole idea of rewarding criminals for this information. It's the unique aspect of reducing their sentences for this information. Um, now let's kind of go into the third point here is where they, they brought in a huge impact. I think they're going to be reducing the amount of gang related violence. We think this is probably unlikely. I think Kai touched already on pretty well why we don't think we're going to end up getting leaders. Later on in my speech, when I'm kind of comparing the teams, I'll, I'll go back into this kind of uh, clash between the, the two benches of why we think it's unlikely and what, what is the best case of actually catching more criminals under their side of the case. And then the finally, the last issue we have with the entire opposition bench, again, this is going back to the opening half, is the kind of mischaracterizing these criminals that are actually caught. And this is a really important thing that the entire opposition bench, I think, has completely missed. They're viewing these criminals as kind of solo riders and purely there for individual incentives. We think that the, so, the societal ties that anyone, anyone in gang-related crime is significantly deeper, is significantly uh, riskier than what the opposition bench is trying to portray here. So what, is it, what does this actually look like? I think Kai again touched on this earlier in his speech, but let's just go back and kind of harp further on what, what these criminals actually are. We think that they, they're probably, vast majority are in organized crime systems. There's huge webs both in the prison system and out of the prison system. The second you start snitching, there are huge connections. People are going to find out, especially if you're going for leadership within, it, within gangs. We think that the, the protection that the criminal systems can give you is probably pretty minimal in these circumstances. And we think what is the, so then then it kind of goes into what is the best case scenario if these individuals are actually giving out information. So we think that if they're giving out information, it's probably not going to be people within their own gang, within their own kind of uh, groups, because again, there's huge ties outside of the prison system. Once you get into the real world, these individuals probably have family coming from the same areas, coming from these same, it's, it's perpetual issues, a lot of this gang related crime. It's not just unique kind of solo riders. We think they probably have family, they probably have loved ones. Um, a wife and kids or everything on the outside. So we think there's huge risk by giving out information. We think that gangs are probably a bit more immoral in the prison system. They're not really going to care what the kind of repercussions are. And they're not really looking out, looking past that kind of first, uh, looking more into a future perspective here. So we think that there's going to be severe issues for these individuals and that kind of like the barrier of risk for these uh, criminals is not really worth it for them. So what is the best case scenario for the opposition side in terms of getting more criminals? We, I think that maybe in the best case, you'll have circumstances where they're able to kind of tip off police force on rival gangs or rival organized groups, where maybe they can tip off some of the low level people that they were competing or kind of clashing with. Yes, okay, so what is, what is what's the, what's the, the benefit of this, we think that probably the benefit is minimal because maybe it kind of gives you on the lead, but what's the harm for this? Probably gonna incite more gang related issues within and outside the prison system. So now let's kind of go back in here and look and kind of rebuild our kind of rather, rather unresponded to extension. So what is it, what was our extension that we kind of brought to you? So we think that this is also where we're differentiating ourselves in the open government. We think that our impacting on the lapse of trust in the criminal justice system, we think is the first one here. So we said that a lack of trust in the criminal justice system is not inherently bad unless it changes how people interact with it. The links we provided shows that even if you catch marginally more criminals, the loss of trust in multiple areas is still worse overall. We think that's the first thing that we brought you. The second thing we brought you is that we're providing a necessary mechanisms to characterize the people who are likely to cut the deals. We're the only team in this debate to properly explain which types of people actually cut deals and even get offered deals in the first place. Uh, it's incredibly important to understand who actually gets these deals as they're not very popular or frequent in the status quo in the first place. And the people who get offered these deals should not get shorter sentences. I think we, we 
we've really kind of, both of us have harpened on this in our speech of why we're principally against reducing sentences for the sole reason of information. We think that the systems in place with rehabilitation is significantly more important. Um, is there a POI? No, okay, so then I'll continue. So what's the third thing that I think we uniquely brought you in this debate? So it's on rehabilitation and cutting deals. So we give the needed linkage for why it is that snitching is not one of the mechanisms for rehabilitation and that already exists within the criminal justice system. And we're doing this on three different points. The first was on the incentive misalignment. The reason why you snitch is not to do good to society, but rather to help yourself directly. We think that's the first level and that's kind of the base level. The second thing is that the certainty of the deal, rehabilitation is done without specific rewards that are certain. Uh, the certainty of cutting these deals means that even if they, uh, they pose as wanting to help society, in fact, the certainty of the deal corrupts that. Um, if they wanted to help, they should be able to snitch without, without kind of having that certainty of a deal. Uh, and then the final thing is here of the, who is getting, who's actually getting targeted in these circumstances. So the people who get these deals are not the traditional targets for re rehabilitation in the first place. They are hardened criminals who are deeply entrenched in organized crime. I've kind of showed you the societal ties that makes it significantly more risky and more less likely for them. Um, and it, it's simply not as easy to rehabilitate them. And that's the reason they have these really long sentences in the first place. And it's why we kind of want to protect the local communities and these individuals. We, we showed you that we're not inherently against rewarding these criminals for the information that they're giving us, but it's, it's the principal level of reducing their sentence on the sole basis of giving us. So I think at the conclusion of this debate, we're the only team that has harped upon these points. We're the only team that's characterized these criminals correctly and are the only team that's kind of still standing in this debate. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you for the speech. To conclude this debate, I'd like to call upon the opposition whip. You have seven minutes here. Uh, hi, do you hear me? Yes. Perfect, uh, then I'll begin. So uh, there have been a few points of clash in this debate. So the first one is for utilitarian versus some other framework. So the framework which has been postulated by the post-government teams. Uh, now they, uh, I think they're even in their frame. Uh, they they miss. Uh, so first of all, we don't agree with their frame. They never demonstrated us how why why crime should be why punishment should be somehow proportional to the crime. But also there are two flaws with their framework. First of all, uh, we do not condition punishment on a crime, but on a damage to society. If a person has compensated the victim, if a person has come clean, if a person instead of killing somebody with an explosion, killed him with a knife. So we give them a less sentence because they offer uh, less danger and they cause less harm to the society. So the measure here is not some arbitrary crime, but why, why, do we, why do we hate crime? Because it's harm to society. So in this frame, we still should reward people who help us to solve the crime. Also the idea about group leaders is not so good because uh, in general, when people commit crimes, they both have the same information about this crime. So, and group leaders, they have information, more information, but they also have committed more crimes. So we do not see, uh, and they should be prosecuted for more crimes. So uh, the next question was uh, like, so the question was of re rehabilitation and uh, uh, whether we should, whether we should, um, uh, uh, how do, how should we determine the length of the sentence? So, uh, as our table has showed that, and uh, as the closing government table has showed that, uh, in general, uh, people who commit or who are part of organized crime uh, are the main target of this motion, and uh, those people uh, will, uh, and as closing government agreed, they are quite hard to rehabilitate, but. Uh, there is one thing that, uh, as we have showed you, that uh, criminals do not cooperate, will, will hate the person who has cooperated with the police, no matter whether it's a rival gang or not rival gang. If you cooperate with the police, you are a no person. You, you will never, ever, ever, ever be able to part of any organized crime. So, I, we think that this, uh, our, uh, when the people, we get people to testify, this uh, does a very a much better rehabilitation job than any amount of psychologists and prison wardens that the open that the government can can throw at those at those prisoners. We can be virtually certain they will not be able to commit those crimes again. 
So uh, next there was a question of deterrence uh, and uh, the, the government mm. and the government says, okay, guys, we would, uh, <clears throat> uh, they would have less sentences, so less deterrence. We say no, because uh, they do not planning on getting caught. And as my teammate has showed, that uh, has shown that uh, in the, uh, well, by yeah, allowing people to rewarding people for snitching on each other, we increase we substantially increase the probability of a criminal getting caught. Yeah, so we by by much larger factors than when when then we decrease their sentence. So we believe that deterrence is also on the opposition side in this debate. Then there was a question about whether they will offer false testimony. Of course they will, but also uh, we understand that we know that they will offer false testimony. We will not reward them for for unsubstantiation of for testimony that has been has has not been confirmed by other evidence. What we will do. Uh, so they will only get reduced sentences if we were able to corroborate the testimony. We will know they will lie. They will, we will not convict, convict innocent people. So uh, they will only get the, if the information was useful and verified. Now, uh, there, so uh, there is um, the question of appearance of justice, which has been promoted by the closing government team. And uh, they say, okay, people will see getting with crimes and have lost trust. But it's, just, it's not how it works. How people people do not how do people know about working through criminal justice system? They know about it from the media, and uh, the media doesn't report, hey, this guy got super low sentence because he snitched. They, they they have the bigger picture. We have been arrested. We have arrested this big mafiosi. Due to a heroic, due to a heroic person who who took tremendous personal risk in order to, in order to, in, uh, in order to help us with it, because again, if there has been no impact, then there is no reduced sentence. If there has been a huge positive impact, we believe that in the media the focus will be on this impact, and this person uh, who took great personal risk uh, will be highlight will not cause any, and. <clears throat> any uh, uh, corruption of perception of justice. So uh, what was uh, now ab going about? Uh, uh, so uh, in uh, terms of our team, we showed you the mechanism. Uh, why is it super important uh, to, why is, the, why, is this, uh, why is this reduced sentence? Why getting criminals to testify against each other? is the unique tool which would help us to target the most difficult and the most dangerous crime. We showed you concrete reasons, concrete mechanisms, how, how, they, how they operate, why are they dangerous, and um, why this testimony is the a unique tool which we cannot substitute by anything else, which would allow us to, uh, to, to fight this crime, to, to find uh, this most dangerous crime. So uh, we also need to know that uh, the organized crime is can be in many different forms. So, for example, you can have a firm which is doing an. It's not only mafia. We can have a firm which it is doing uh, on this scheme, and an account. We want an accountant to, uh, which is, does not have the mafia enforcement capabilities, and we want the accountant of this firm to snitch. We, we can have corrupt government officials, which are hard to begin prosecuting against without some, some sort of uh, some, some sort of uh, probable cause, and uh, that's why we beg you to oppose. Thank you. Thank you for this debate. So uh, I will proceed to room for judges with the frame. We should go to the main room, and then we'll be located. So please wait for 15 minutes.